Hello and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We are back again today with another match reaction for you, reacting to West Bromwich Albion's one all draw with Watford. Another interesting game uh, to kick off the championship season, the second one all draw of the season of course, starting off with Middlesbrough one all away from home, but now our Hawthorne's battle has also finished one all. So yeah, we'll be chatting through all of the talking from points from the game, giving a bit of analysis, also talking about uh, who gets a little special shout out and which players I thought played particularly well last night. Uh, and yeah, just going through uh, all, all of the match details and, and, and chatting about those. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please drop them below in the comment section below. Make sure you uh, let me know what you thought of the game. Did you go? Unfortunately, I wasn't there and hopefully we'll, uh, I'll be at another home game uh, pretty soon. But yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't there, but I'm sure you guys were as well. So make sure you um, drop your comments down below. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed the game. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're new. But let's crack on with this match reaction. You're watching the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. For match previews, match day vlogs, match reactions and more, make sure to subscribe to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. Let's start off then with setting the scene really, pre-match going into it, Daryl DK, of course, we were hoping could get a start, we were hoping that Dean Garner would come in for Phillips, we got that, we didn't quite get Daryl DK on the pitch though, of course, we found out that he's again injured, which is a real shame, I think, yeah, to, to have him out again, obviously a thigh injury this time. I mean, it's a real, real disappointment not to see not to have seen him in the side last night because I thought he'd be really good with the chances that were created, but... You know, with the amount of um, you know hope we had towards DK to come in and, and sort of score some goals for this season, it's a shame to see him out injured again. And obviously, we'll await the severity of the, the injury and the severity of, of what's wrong with him with the scan. But I thought that you know it's just a real blow for Albion. And obviously, Bruce was devastated talking to Sky's cameras that you know once again he's injured. I think he's just a real battering ram. And you know, I think. Um, it's just a real shame to see him uh, see him injured again. I think, you know, some of the reaction has been once again unjust on social media. I think, you know, I've seen a lot of people blaming him, you know, calling him the next Sturridge and whatnot. And, you know, you can jest with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a young lad, you know, trying to get into trying to get into the team. Firstly, had an injury before he came in and before he, uh, you know, really got running in Albion. And, you know, he, he worked really hard to come back from it. You know, he's, I'm sure there's nothing he'd rather be doing than scoring goals for Albion. So, you know, pinning this on DK... Um, is probably unfair, and I think the fact that he was injured, you know, the fact that he got injured again, is not his fault. I'm sure that you know he's re he's really worked hard to get himself back into the first team after coming back from injury. But I think you know it's a real shame to not see him in 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 the team again. And you know I'm sure that he'll he'll work hard to come back, and you know he'll manage to get get back into the team pretty soon. I know a lot of my you know the not the listeners to these videos are American, and I think that you know it's a really big blow for, for yourselves of course for the World Cup because you know that I think there's a bit of a gaping hole up, up, up front for yourselves and I hope I thought that maybe DK could be that guy to fill it if he could get some get a consistent run of games together get some form together and, and manage to get into the team so it's a shame for him it's a shame for you know obviously America to have it to not have him uh, you know get, getting some regular football ahead of the World Cup but I think it's just a real shame to see him with that with that injury and yeah, I'm sure we'll see him back soon. But of course, we did get the Dean Garner for Phillips change uh, coming in uh, before the match, of course, hoping to pin back some of Watford's more offensive options. And yeah, we hope that DK would be able to start and replace Carlin Grant, who, yeah, Carlin Grant scored in this game, of course, in the 1-1 draw. But, you know, he did miss quite a few chances, despite what looked like really good movement and quite good striker play from him, despite, you know, despite the fact that he's probably not uh, best suited to that position. So, yeah, it's a shame to see that... Um, Dika couldn't come in, but Grant did a decent job. Of course, he did miss quite a few chances, but he did get in those areas quite a lot and managed to score, you know, the goal that he needed to. But of course, there are a few more chances for him, and at least he's getting in those areas. I think, you know, obviously the the big talking point of that first half was a wonder goal from Ismail Assar, probably the goal of the season already. If I'm honest, in the Championship, you know, you won't see much better than that. Of course, caught Button a bit off his line. I don't think that's really necessarily Button's fault. I think you know if if he was on if he was on his line, there'd be such a huge gap between defence and the, and the, and the goalkeeper. And I think you know easily you could chip a ball in behind and and go in on goal from there. So I think you know it's just one of those that you can't help in a way. But I, I kind of feel that there was a bit of um, a bit more pressure on the ball. If there was a bit more pressure on the ball, we'd have been able to um, you know we'd have been able to do something from there. So. 
yeah, I think Livermore was goal side of him a couple of yards away. And after giving away the ball, I'd have thought he'd be quite a bit more determined to win it back. So it's just the fact that Saar had his chance to pick his touch, to pick his head up and strike the ball so cleanly and so effortlessly. I think that that's more of a bugbear than bug Button being off his line. But it's one of those goals. It's unlikely to probably be scored again against you. Mind you, I can think back a couple of years ago, Ashley Fletcher did something similar for Middlesbrough. But... I think there's a chance that if we, um, you know, that, that you know those goals don't don't normally go in against you, so you just have to sit back and kind of admire them and, and do what you can to get back into the game. And we really did, you know, we had a really dominant performance. There were far too many chances wasted as well. You know, I think Jed Wallace was absolutely phenomenal in constantly creating them for Albion. I think you know the way that he marauded down the right hand side, his work ethic is fantastic, and I think. Um, you know, Grant could have had quite a few goals thanks to some of the crosses that he put in. Of course, the one in the box uh, he had really early on in the game from a corner, it ricocheted about. Grant ended up in on goal, one on one with Backman, and I think um, you know it was, a, it was a decent save. But I think Grant didn't really give him a lot to work with in getting the ball uh, off target. It, you know, on you know on target and in one of the corners really. You know, the toe poke that he had, a Wallace cross again along the floor. He had the chance to, to toe poke it into the net and, and, and put it wide. Uh, he had a volley that went into the stand. Uh, he play, was played in a couple of times as well. I think he actually scored probably one of the most hardest chances that he had in the game. So, yeah, I think that's difficult uh, for Grant to, to take. But I think the movement was there. I think the way that he was getting him into dangerous areas, I think is decent for him. So, for Grant, I think that's good. And I think that he's um, obviously... Um, done a decent job really I think there is need for a new striker uh, if DK is going to be injured for a little bit of time I think you need to bring in another striker I think they need to be able to play in those uh, those dangerous areas I think if I'm a Premier League striker looking for a bit of game time I'm kind of thinking you know I could score a bag full in, in, in Albion's side at this moment in time so for me I think there's, there's a chance that you know a striker comes in on loan and if I'm watching that and I'm a young striker looking for some game time I probably think you know the, the Albion after watching that could create a load of chances and I think it's good that Grant scored, uh, but yeah, I think he could have scored quite a few more with the movement that he was doing, which credit to him was fantastic. So, second half, um, Saar was bought, you know, bought down by a semi Ajay for a penalty. Uh, he can't, couldn't score from twelve yards though. I think Ajay, I, I don't really place a, a lot of blame at his door. Obviously, we'll go into who I thought played particularly well towards the end of the video, but I think um, he actually did quite well to, to to keep up with him. But I think he stumbled himself, and in the end, stumbled into either Dennis or Saar. I can't remember who was running in on goal. Um, and it was a bit of an odd penalty. I think Button got a bit of revenge. You know, he's made. You know, he had a bit of egg on his face after that goal from Saar. But you know, he ended up doing pretty decently to save it, even though it was a bit of a what looked like a little bit of a weak penalty. But it, it was well placed, if I'm honest. So I think, I think Button's conceded one of those similar uh, to Brennan Johnson of Nottingham Forest. Um, you know, last season. So. Yeah, I think an okay of Kushlu coming in, that was really nice to see. You know, he really does ooze class. It was nice to see a chant from him and a really warm reception. So, you know, the fact that Kushlu was in the side, I think to, to see him play more games would be really nice. To see him to come in for Livermore would be fantastic as well. So, yeah, overall, pretty positive signs from the games. You know, Kushlu did did really well when he came on. I think, he, you know, when he managed to roll a couple of a couple of midfielders and managed to move into the attacking third. I think that's just a glimpse of how he can carry the ball and I think that he'll be fantastic at doing that for Albion. And yeah, as so going back to the penalty, I think Button did well to save it. He was left with egg on his face really from Sar's earlier effort and I think he, he got a bit of revenge there. But overall I'm really pleased with the performance. It was really dominant and I think, you know, Yukushlu coming in is only going to strengthen. DK coming back at some point is going to strengthen. A lone striker signing is going to strengthen as well. You know, I, I think we're going to go through some special shout outs. I don't want to, I think this was a fantastic team performance. You know, one of the better team performances I've seen for probably a couple of years at the Hawthorns. So special shout outs for me go to Shemi Ajayi. Despite the penalty, I thought he was really solid at the back. You know, his pace really helped combat what, you know, I think Watford were a really, uh, look a really odd side. I think they look like they're trying to play a little bit like Ishmael did under us. And I think they're trying to kind of... Um, lump the ball into wide areas, be a bit hopeful. But I think Shemi Ajayi did fantastically well to cover with his pace. And the penalty, I, I put that down as a bit of an accident. I wouldn't blame him really for that. Jason Malumbi, I thought was fantastic. He really never stopped in um, in the midfield, winning the ball back. He's getting better at progressing it, I think, alongside Yakuzlu. He looks fantastic and I think he'll be great. Um, if Dana Furlong, I thought, looked much better. If I have to be fair to him, you know, I, I criticised him last week for a poor performance, but he did really well. Uh, of course, going going forwards, I think he looked decent and had a chance as well himself to score. Uh, Daniel Batman saved a, a, a pretty uh, vicious volley from from Furlong, and I have to credit him for for what looked like a better performance. You know, I was looking at him as a real weak point against Middlesbrough, but 
you know, against Watford, he turned it on and I was a bit worried about how he'd face up against those two. But yeah, he was fantastic. Jed Wallace as well, my man of the match. I thought he was in incredible. You know, his work ethic down the right-hand side, the way he crosses the ball in, I think he just looks um, like a real sign. I thought Swift was a little more missing, but I think he played more of a tidier role rather than somebody looking to penetrate Watford's defence. And I think Wallace did that perfectly with crossing the ball in from those wide areas. And I think... Uh, you know, strikers, you know, in our side, if we bring in a new striker, could score bags in with, with Jed Wallace on the wing. Steve Bruce as well deserves a special shout out. Organised in and out of possession. I thought that he set the team up really, really well uh, last night. And I thought the team performance was down to a T. The motivation, you could hear the atmosphere in the Hawthorns. You could hear that atmosphere rubbing off on the player, players. You know, it's simple to think that, you know, just that 100% effort from Albion's players, it will lead to better atmosphere. And, you know, we'll get, you know, Albion fans will give a bit back in order to see that effort on the pitch. So, yeah, that's all we've really got time for in this match reaction. We've really dissected it, but I think the final word is to finish those chances for Albion. You know, you do that, you're onto a winner, and I think that we can see a really successful season ahead if we continue with the passion and the performances that we saw. And I think it's it's hopefully a bit of a new dawn for Albion, you know, be, you know looking to, you know, dominate a promotion rival or promotion side in Watford. So, yeah, I think it's a really good start and a good start to the season, really. A really good one and a half games, I'd say. The second half at Middlesbrough and the whole game here, we were, we were fantastic and one of the better team performances, as I said. So I look forward to seeing more. Look forward to see continuing this form and hopefully we can start sticking the ball in the back of the net to boot. But yeah, that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much for watching uh, this video on the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. Drop your thoughts down below and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.